So I was watching some of my content creator friends on YouTube and a lot of them are showing some of their setups for whatever they shoot. One of them is Kevin De La Serna who is an amazing graphic artist and is a whiz in Photoshop and he showed his rig on how he shoots his YouTube videos. And also, of course, Jiggy Alejandrino, who shoots portraits and has this amazing studio setup and this amazing setup for his YouTube camera that records via HDMI and all that. And so I thought, I don't see any landscape photography rigs or not even architectural photography rigs or not even time-lapse rigs. And I thought, maybe I should try it. And so I reached out to the good people over at Small Rig and kind of gave them that idea. And they threw the challenge back at me. And basically, they challenged me to create my own rig for basically everything I do for landscape photography, for architectural photography, and for time lapse, and anything in between. And they sent me almost everything that I needed. And of course, they came in in individual boxes, which I won't really unbox in front of you. But it's good to know that even if they come in individual boxes, these are all recyclable and eco-friendly packages that are helping the environment. So that's a huge plus. So in this video, join me as I put together my rig. Well, it's not really going to be a huge rig because a lot of it is going to be on the tripod instead of on the camera itself. But anyway, join me as I build the rig for my landscape photography, my architectural photography, and the time lapse that I do from time to time. Now to orient you, we have some super clamps, some ball heads that connect to the cold shoe, some ball heads and arms that connect to a thread, a wireless remote, my myops trigger, a power bank holder, some arms, a strap, a smartphone cage or holder, an L bracket, a multi-tool, a cage, and a power bank. Now whenever I get a new camera, the automatic thing that I order is of course this. This is an L bracket. And generally, no matter what kind of photography you do, it's very likely that this will come in handy for you. And of course, this is the one specifically for the Sony a7 IV. And it comes with the tool right here that you can use to mount it securely. And of course, this is perfect for landscape photography, for architectural photography, for product photography, anything that really uses a tripod, especially those wherein you might have to shoot vertical because of the L bracket, of course. Now this one, of course, came with a cold shoe right here. And I noticed that I wanted actually to change that. And instead of the tool right there, I just want to show you this really nice multi-tool also from small rig that I got which is basically something that I put together with my car key so that I have a tool wherever I go just in case and basically what I wanted to do is of course I can take that out but I can also turn it this way and if you're a landscape photographer, you might be wondering what I would put here. And of course, I would put my smart trigger right here. Why? Because I don't want to take this thing out. I don't want to expose the hot shoe and potentially just lose that cover. And this will probably not fit because of the size of the Myops trigger. So if you're going to use this bear with with the L bracket then you should have it the other way but the reason I'm using that is because I'm actually going to use either these or these to mount the trigger and let me just show you what this does so the reason why I actually wanted something like this to mount the Myop Smart Plus trigger on is because I love the fact that the Smart Plus has a screen because aside from controlling it 
with my smartphone. I can actually just control it with the screen right here. Now the problem is if I'm using the Smart Plus with my tripod a bit higher than my line of sight, then I can barely see the screen if it is resting on the hot shoe. So with this arm that actually has a ball head, I can have the Smart Plus face any direction so I can still see it. And if I'm shooting some lightning, I can still have it face the direction of the lightning and it can detect the lightning altogether and trigger the camera for exposure. Now another really basic thing here is the wrist strap. Because I really can't find any use for shoulder straps or sling straps whatsoever. And I often just need a wrist strap for safety, especially when I'm shooting with a tripod. And generally, the strap is just for my peace of mind because I do shoot a lot of cityscapes. I often have my camera hanging out of a ledge 10, 20, maybe even 60 stories up. So sometimes I just want to have the strap on my wrist, even if I'm not holding the camera so, the, so that I don't really shake the exposure. But still, for if for some reason, it's never happened, but if for some reason my camera falls off, it's right there. Or I can just, you know, I can also have this hooked onto something that will keep the camera secure. So basically, this is what you need for landscape photography, the most basic thing that you need for landscape photography. Now, when I'm out shooting in the field, I have this common frustration with almost all my tripods whenever I'm doing long exposures with filters. I use this low pro gear up filter bag that has this strap right here for, for holding the filter bag in general. And I'm always looking for somewhere to put the filter bag or hang the filter bag, especially when I'm shooting exposures that are five minutes or three minutes long and there's just such a long wait and I don't want to be holding the filter bag, but I might need to change filters in any given time. So I want to have the bag right there. So for that purpose, the first thing I thought of was to use the small rig super clamp. And I know there's so many things that this super clamp can do, but generally what I'm gonna do is have that right here, lock it, and use the knob to hang my filter bag. So that's basically it. The clamp actually has a lot of threads, so if later on I wanna put anything else there, I still can do that. Another thing is that though commonly I use the Myop Smart Plus for the heavier processes and heavier, the more advanced shooting for time-lapse, for really long exposures, sometimes I just need a quick remote which is something that I would use maybe when I'm shooting seascape, some wave painting, and I don't really need a timer. I just need something to trigger the, the remote and I don't wanna have my smartphone out and I don't also want to get the Smart Plus wet. So I also got this Bluetooth remote control from Small Rig, and this remote also has some loops for straps. So I can, I will probably put a strap right here just to have something to secure this. It also has a screw here, so I can mount it onto the cage or onto the clamp. Or it also comes with a Velcro strap right here. So in any case, I can use any of them for that purpose. It's a very simple trick and it's gonna help me whenever I don't really need a timer or any of the more advanced functions of my camera trigger. Now I did already swap out the L bracket for the small rig cage and this is something that I would use for my architectural photography shoots. Probably not something I would bring in landscape locations, especially if there's a bit of a trek that has to happen before getting to the location. But for shoots wherein I can have a bit of bulk, I can use the cage. Now this is of course mainly used by filmmakers and videographers and they have these nice little handles and also some uh, follow focus and all those, but not really something that we would use for architectural photography, landscape photography, or time-lapse. 
For this one, I would still want to put my Smart Plus trigger, but instead I will be using this. So this is basically a mini ball head that can go right here to the cold shoe extension. And that is how I'm going to mount the Myop Smart Plus. And I do use the Smart Plus quite a lot when it comes to architectural photography because I like using as much as possible the techniques that I use on landscape photography in my architectural photography to put a little bit more creativity into photographing these buildings. Now I commonly see a lot of filmmakers use external monitors for their work. I have had some experiences doing that for architectural photography wherein I might need a bigger screen or I might need a screen elsewhere. But of course for shooting stills, another hack that you can do is actually use your phone as an external monitor. Especially if you are someone who uses Sony cameras because of the imaging edge application. And so I need something to mount my phone with. And what I love about my 055 is that it actually has this link port right here. And that comes in really handy for extra accessories. I've even used an arm in the past to mount another camera onto this port. So this is the 9.5 inch articulating arm. And this is the small rig smartphone cage. Now this is quite big actually, and I do wish they had something a bit smaller. But this is the one that's universal because they do have some fitted cages for iPhones and Samsung and even Huawei phones. But I use an Asus Zenfone, so that is not on their list. However, this cage is actually really easy to use. So if you want to mount your phone, all you need to do is squeeze it right in here and you're good. So that's something handy for architectural photography because sometimes I'm squeezing into tight spaces and I still need to see the screen, of course. And so with the phone as my external monitor, it's going to be easier and also kind of a remote as well. Now, another common thing I do with both landscape photography and architecture is shooting time lapse. And of course, there are some more complicated time lapse rigs and some more complicated motion accessories that we have for time lapse. But another crucial thing that I commonly look for in shooting time lapse is extra power. So this is actually a power bank holder from Small Rig, and it can mount most portable smartphone power banks. And of course, I would need something to mount that onto. So I will use another super clamp right here and for that to mount, I will need this mail to mail thread that you can get also from small rig through these um, various accessories and extra screws that you can get from them. So I'm going to use a 3 4 inch thread here and I'm going to mount the power bank right here. So this is the Asus ZenPower Pro PD. And there we go. So I can just mount this onto one of the tripod legs. And I will use this one on this side that has not been utilized. And there we go. This is my overkill landscape architecture time lapse rig. Or basically just all the things I would want to mount onto my camera and onto my tripod and all the things that I needed to be able to mount them. Again, of course, this setup is not your ideal setup. It's not something you would bring on location, especially when there's a bit of a hike involved. They're not meant to be used altogether, but these are basically suggestions on what you can do if you find the need for any of these in your own workflow. But of course, if we're talking about the most basic or the most essential, then of course get an L bracket. The L bracket is always just there on your camera. So if you're using an Arca Swiss type um, mounting system, then you're never gonna be caught without a base plate and that's the number one benefit of it. 
And of course, you can also use the L bracket to mount your camera vertically so you don't have to make use of an even weight when it comes to using a ball head. And of course, another thing is have a remote. May it be the simple remote right here or a smart trigger like this one, the Myop Smart Plus. And ultimately, the strap comes in really handy. You might need the extra screw, so it's really something that you would want to keep even just at home so you have the spare screws and whenever you need to mount something extra onto your camera or onto your cage, your tripod, you have it right there. Now, the one thing I'm actually always going to be bringing with me, even if I'm not shooting, is this multi-tool because this can help me with almost anything. It has a screwdriver and all the hex screws and even a flat head right here. And it's basically something I'd like to keep in my pocket. I do wish that Small Rig made something like this that can also put your car keys or maybe even just your house keys along with the screwdrivers but let's see if they can do that now one thing i do wish small rig would also have is a bigger version of this super clamp something that can latch onto a tabletop something that can latch onto big railings and ledges of buildings because i shoot cityscapes from rooftops and i would love a clamp that can just mount my camera onto the railing and that would be great. So yeah, I hope you like these suggestions. If you have any questions about them, do leave them down below in the comments and I will get to you. And of course, if you're new to the channel, my name is Nico Valenzuela. As I said multiple times, I shoot landscape photography, architectural photography, time lapse, and everything in between. And this channel is mainly about those and all the gear and all the accessories. So if you're into that, then feel free to click that subscribe button and also that notification bell. In any case, thank you for watching.